The big stories live right here on Plus TV Africa and you're watching your favorite entertainment news program, Tea Time. And you know how we do it right here. We bring you all of the best bits in the world of entertainment. On today's episode, and like other episodes, it's a fantastic lineup as usual. But before we tell you what's on, uh, allow me to do the usual intros. I am Tokumbo Taiwo, uh, here with the usual suspects, the diplomatic Elsie Godwin and the advocate of all advocates, Ife Oshunkeye. Hi, guys. I I know you were tired of it, but... Um, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. You're I, going to I bask. love the title. Oh, okay, so, yeah. good. Because I was... Because Ifeoma was about to take it away from him, so he needs to bask in it right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Because I thought it was like, if he's no, going I to complain, I didn't complain. more like the advocate of all women. Nah, she's the advocate for everyone. For all okay. women. For everyone. For all women. For everyone. For all women. That's, Are we going to have this what, argument right now? Men, okay, well, for everyone. Understand. Yeah, I give it to you. Maybe we should call you the advocate of all men. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know what. <laughs> okay, okay, no, okay. So now, okay, I give you fair the title for um, the advocate for human, for all humans. Yeah. Okay, um, you're the one for all of the other species. Human, <laughs> animals. <laughs> Okay. You know, four Forest. lovers, <laughs> animal cruelty. All right, guys. Yeah. So, is there anything new before we move on, or nothing exciting? Um, I think we should talk about um, Nipsey also. And, oh, the baby mama yeah, the drama. Baby drama. Baby mama mm. drama. Because it There's always like, gets really funny. Okay, when just in one... case anyone hasn't like followed up on that story, basically there's some kind of um, custody. Uh, child, cost, custody child custody battle, battle mm -hmm. between his sister yeah. and the baby mama. And the baby mama. Yeah. So or go the ahead. Of the child, yeah, yeah. So okay. basically, Tanisha, mm -hmm. who was um, Nipsey's first baby mama, Emilia, or what's that name? Tanisha. Emilia. No, no. Tanisha is the mother. The girl, Emilia. Oh, something. the girl. Yeah. Okay. And um, she is. He's always been in custody of the girl, but since he died, she mm -hmm. wants her daughter back. Mm. And um, it's there are a lot of conspiracy theories about this because a lot of people are thinking, oh, she wants a child support because definitely of course, I'm thinking she'll that be getting too. something from his estate mm -hmm. and all of that. Absolutely. So, um, but she's always lived with Nipsey. She's mm -hmm. always lived with his family. She's daughter. always lived yeah. with Lauren London. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if we so think about it, minutes. we have to be logical. Yes. I think it's best for the girl to, to be around people she's mm -hmm. always been around. I mean, That's yeah. my own opinion. She definitely but... lost the custody battle initially for mm -hmm. yeah. baby to be with um, Nipsey in the first place. So yes. I don't know where she's coming from right now. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, there's I don't only think, one place she's coming getting, from. Like you first said, it's just the financial. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she I won't. think they said they're working out something the, I think the sister has already won from the last I saw. They still have, I think, July. Oh, July. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on to today's agenda, we do have um, a studio guest right here. And right about now, we'll introduce him. He's uh, first and foremost an actor. He's been in the Nollywood industry for the last 13 to 14 years. Uh, his list of works includes Kilanta by Biodun Jimo uh, before moving on to do uh, Super Story. He's also a movie producer and one of his produced works include Wendy. Suave, good looking and with a build and physique that keeps the ladies calling and with over 160,000 followers on Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the sharp, shrewd, Sean Sheung Jimo. Brown Rose. Let me say, sharp, shrewd, Sean. <laughs> no, no pun intended. No pun intended. But that's that. Thank you for having me. All right, Sean, good to have you on the yeah, program. Yeah. For a moment, I thought you were talking about someone else. Someone else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone feels that way. <laughs> so good to have you on the program. Thank you. Okay, so let's do the honors. Elsie, let's start with you first. Ladies first. Oh, goodness. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, um, so how has the, movie, um, the industry been for you? Yeah, you know, so so, ups and downs, but it's been great. You know, mm. I have it better than most, so I'm thankful. I watched an interview where you were talking about the income when it comes to <laughs> male and female in the industry, because it's looking like the the women are buying the cars, building the houses, mm -hmm. and men we're not seeing anything. Maybe you should address that a little well, more. Well, in in the real sense of it, in the real life, like mm -hmm. women kind of do better than men because women have more opportunities. You know, they have. You know, people, they appeal to the soft side of people generally, of men generally, so it's easier for them to get stuff. So I think it's just a general thing. It's a natural thing. And in the industry, it's just um, a little bit more pronounced because these ladies are stars and everybody wants to hang around a star. So, you know, people will do whatever it takes to be around them. So most of these things they're getting is not, is not always from, you know, their hustle, what they do. Like, 
you know, movie making and all that stuff. But I'm not going to go into the details of what uh, I Ah, no, you have to. <laughs> this I mean, is tea time. So we always spill said, tea. You also so, no, said wait, can he, he just conclude? I need him to it. respond on something, then he'll conclude okay. it. Yeah. You said um, women have more opportunities. Yeah. I think that's almost not possible or not right right now in the grand scheme of things because that's why we have so many people coming out to say um, feminism, equality, give women better opportunities. So maybe you want to explain what that meant in your own statement. I, I hope I'm not trying to stay in the kind of part right now, but we all know that women want more than women want the whole world. Mm. Women have it going for them, honestly. Like, we do. Uh, yeah, sure. Mm. Uh, you know, no one has it perfect. But women have it way better than men in this world, trust me. Because women are cool. Like everybody, if you see someone eating a woman, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, why are you doing that? Yeah. We want to protect them. We mm -hmm. want to, you know, want to step up to, you know, step up for them. And yet, they, they wear makeup, they wear artificial air, they wear, you know, all this stuff. Nobody complains about it. You understand? We're, we're just trying to be men. We're just trying to survive. And then you still want to be like us. You know, so you, you want you have so so many things, and yet you want so much more. I don't and think it, women want to be like men, do I? Oh. Think women just want to be respected as women. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let me allow women you to respect Let's not go deep into <laughs> But you know what? I understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. because of the patriarchal system, yeah. which expects men to do more. And in the real sense, if you really want to look at it, mm -hmm. women have more opportunities. They get more advantages because. A man has to go out if there. If you say advantages, hold on, maybe hold I will on. understand. A but woman, opportunities, nah. Yeah, no. Do you know why she will get more opportunities? Because a man will probably go out there to also and make the daily bread for the family. Mm -hmm. But a woman can get married to a man that will tell you, look, I don't even want you to work. I'll be giving you two million naira every month. Yeah. How about that? That's what's up. Do you understand? That's exactly what I'm talking well, about. Well, so... Mm -hmm. So you're going to start what? to overlook the whole issues women face. No, I'm not. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> let's rest it. Because if we go, go on, on, we're, we're not going to have true, a conversation true, yeah, we should have true. with her. Okay. okay, so um, first thing. When I listen to you talk, I've known you for a while, and every time I listen to you talk, I always go away with the knowledge. So I would like to know, what are your principles in life? What are the principles that guide your daily life? Uh, well, for me, it's um, be kind, don't be nice. <laughs> mm. Explain that so you don't get taken out of context. Oh, well, um, kindness is like being humane, you know, like putting, other people in your, putting yourself in other people's situations and shoes, you know, to know how it feels, you know. But being nice has been taken for granted a lot of times. I don't like to be taken for granted. I'm a very blunt person. I say it as it is. You know, mm -hmm. I try to be diplomatic. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I just believe you have to be yourself. Like you have to know yourself first. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know yourself, people are gonna deal with you the way you present yourself. You know, and this morning, I, I, somebody told me something like, and this is something I hear a lot of times. It goes like, oh, a lot of people think you're proud. A lot of people talk behind you and they say, oh, it's arrogant. If you really know me, you know I'm not. I'm the sweetest person in the mm -hmm. world. He knows. Mm -hmm. You know, but just because I'm not gonna walk into a room and start laughing with everybody, mm -hmm. like I, because I don't want you to feel it's that easy to get to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta so work. So is for that it. a front then? It's you, not a front, it's just me. Okay. You, you see, the, the the reason why I ask that question is, you know, like you say, you walk into the room, you're not going to smile with everyone. But at the, at the same time, you know, if you're not giving that friendly vibe, surely people are not going to walk up to you and be like, you know, all, especially with the women, all love it of you or anything like that. So how do you how do you respond to people who think, yes, maybe that's a front in, in order not to get too close? It's two things. Okay. It's one thing, to, when I came to this room, I smiled at you, right? I smiled at everybody. But then I do that and I sit. Okay. You know, I don't have to be all chatty. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think that's where the problem, people don't know where to stop. They mm -hmm. don't know where to Always separate, draw the line. Draw the line. Okay. You understand? Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to ask, you know, is um, one of the things that people see about you is, I don't know, but you can correct the, the, the um, impression. I don't know if it's right or if it's wrong. I know you're married, you know, mm -hmm. and I know uh, that there are some people out there that see you as a player, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I also know that um, before you got into the industry, you had like some kind of divine encounter that made you believe that this is what you're supposed to do. You know, world. Yeah. Uh, this is I what you're supposed to, to do. Ask him that yes. Well. So I'm having some kind of difficulty marrying the two. Your like deep spiritual side, your the player side, the, player side, <laughs> the actor side. I'm like, what's going on here? We have three balls juggling here. So clarify. So who, you know, is, who is Shion Shion? Yes, who is Shion? Shion Shion Jimoy is who you get to meet at every point in time. Like. Okay. 
I'm a product of my experiences, you understand? When I, when I come to a place or when I go to a place and I don't want to talk to everybody immediately, I want them to know me first and know if they like me and if I like them, it's because of my experiences. When I was in university, girls, I went to a private university, girls were like, you know, very superficial and all that. If you talk to them first, they could, they could make you feel so bad. Like, why are you talking to me? So when, I, when I'm around people like that, I don't talk to them first. You know, then it strikes a kind of curiosity, and then we become friends, and then we're like, oh, I didn't know you were this nice. It's always better like that. But I would do you, rather... Do people take that as arrogance? Well, people that really know me know I'm not arrogant. Like, that's the important mm. thing. You know me. I don't care about what people that don't know me think about me. Mm. Honestly. Okay. You know what? We're still <laughs> going to come back to that question, uh, but let's quickly go on a break. When we return, uh, we'll continue in our interesting uh, conversation with our, our studio guest, Sheung Sean Ajima. We'll be right back. We do not understand, we will stigmatize. What you can see is the remaining of the tanker that exploded. The suspect equally confessed. A 500 naira they collect them. With no talk, they will beat you. Now you draw the 5 ID. If you're just joining us, this is Tea Time. And if you're just joining us, we're talking to gifted actor Sean Sheung Jimo. Okay, so before the break, I had like a three in one question. I think you dealt, dealt with one part, mm -hmm. but I'm still like trying to hone in on the spiritual side of you. Is there a spiritual side to you? And tell us how you actually, you know, uh, had that divine connection where you felt you had to get into acting. And talking about that spiritual connection, I read an article about you where you said it was your destiny mm -hmm. to. Be an actor. Actual. Yeah. So I'd like you to explain that while you're answering that. All right, um, I'm a very um, philosophical person. I believe in philosophy over science. And um, I believe in the cosmos. I believe, you know, I keep saying the cosmos because we live in a world now where everybody has their doubts about God and all that stuff, but we can't, we can't deny the fact that there's a, there's a force that controls stuff. So that being said, I believe life is a script that we're all acting out. Nothing is a, nothing mm. is a coincidence in life, mm. you know? That's why when you want to do something and you, and you succeed, if you look back, you know you, you knew you were going to succeed. How do you know? How do you have that conviction? How do you know this is what you're supposed to do? Because it's right inside you. You know what I mean? So I was raised in a Christian home, definitely, but I have, like, I have a strong connection with the, the cosmos. I know it's, nothing happens you know, physically. Everything happens spiritually, and I feel it. You know, this is not something you can explain to anybody. If you don't feel it, you don't feel it. I've, got, I've gotten to points in my life where I doubted the existence of God. And I tell people, if you don't reach that point, you won't really understand God. Mm. You understand what I mean? You have to doubt it first, mm -hmm. and then understand it. And then know that things don't work out your way, because you didn't write the script. That's why, no matter how good you are, there are going to be robbers, there are going to be killers. No matter how good the world turns, there are going to be bad people. That is their destiny. Mm. It's a script. Like, I'm a writer. I want to write a movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write the star, uh, um, the uh, protagonist, mm -hmm. the antagonist. Everybody, I'm, I am going to give them a role. They are going to play that role. Who's mm -hmm. going to die is going to die. Who's going to leave is going to leave. So mm -hmm. that's just the way the world is. So I believe that while you're, while, you're, while you're leaving, just enjoy yourself. I try to enjoy everything. I enjoy myself a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't do any immoral stuff, basically, but I savor every moment of my life. Okay. Because I know that tomorrow is never promised. But what exactly, where lies in your belief? Is that a belief in God or belief in the cosmos, like you just said? Yeah, now? it is God. Okay. But, you know, because, you know, so I, I try to say this because sometimes it's better not to f force things on people mm -hmm. so that they can have an open mind. Okay. Because if you keep saying God, some people shut out okay. the moment you start saying God. Mm -hmm. I know it's God. Mm -hmm. But then if you really want to help people, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
create loose ends mm -hmm. is the cosmos. Now they start thinking, okay, what's the cosmos? I feel something. What do I feel? Mm -hmm. And then that could lead them to God. Okay. You know? So in doubting God, to so understand God, how long should these doubts last? Or could it last before <laughs> we start to realize that you, there is a problem? There's no, there, there's no time frame. Mm. You know, you just have to reach that rock bottom. Where you know you, you need, need to get to, to that back. spot. Where you go like, oh my God, so what really is going on? Mm -hmm. Is there really God? Like, if God exists, why do people die? And then you start to understand that we weren't created for ourselves. We we're created for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why good people die, bad people. doesn't matter what you do. You, mm -hmm. You're going to die when you're going to die. So if, if there was something we could do to change it, we would do it. Okay. Everybody that has come to this world at some point has died or will die. Okay. All right. So do you want to tell us about your low point, that low point where you actually had a turning point, you know, when you actually started believing again? So were you, like, down in life or what sort of experience did you go through that made you realize, oh, there is more to this life that meets the eye? It's just like um, being depressed. Sometimes nothing triggers it. It just comes. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you can't just be happy. Okay. You know, so there are times where you feel like that and you go like, you, you, you start to find meaning in life. And if you really want to find meaning in life, literally, life has no meaning. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. regardless of what you do, it would always find a way to eat you on the head. Mm. At okay. some point. Yeah, so mm. just to clarify, you didn't go through any low point nope. in time. <laughs> you <laughs> did, you went depressed. <laughs> I was, I was never depressed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Specialist, should we call the mental health okay. specialist? Yeah. All right, who okay, wants so, to go next? Um, you have been abroad for a while now, you relocated, and it's more like the norm in Nollywood re in recent times mm -hmm. for yeah. everybody it's to a Nigerian to dream. go out there and live the American dream. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, I've seen you with um, Sean George, I've seen you with, um, uh, what's her name? Um, um, Simon, Doris Simon, yeah. she's also relocated yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you with and I've seen you in a lot of productions as well. Yeah. Now, why do you think a lot of Nigerian actors and actresses are relocating abroad? And is that favorable to your career? Sorry, did you say Sean George or Shan? No, not Sean George. Sean George is not she lives in Nigeria. She okay. Hasn't relocated. Okay. Yeah, okay, but I saw you in a production. Yeah, yeah, America, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Let me tell you something. This question no, are you just, sure Shane George has in because she no, no, no. posted she lives, pictures saying that hey, he would don't know. come back. She, she lives in Nigeria. She lives in, I think she lives in Calabar or something. Okay. She lives, oh, she yeah? lives in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, but, okay. You know, the question you just asked me is a rhetorical question, but I'm still going to answer because you know the answer already. Things are not working in this country, honestly. You know? You're getting somewhere. And um, <laughs> if, if you really, I didn't plan to relocate. Mm hmm. And I won't even really say I relocated, even though I spend more time in America, but I also spend no, a lot of I time in Nigeria. Like, so your your family? Yeah, because you know, because we don't stay in America. But I come to Nigeria like twice a year, every year, like all the time. I'm always here. Twice a year. I think yeah. your, your, your location is where your family really is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But then, this is where my job is. But now it's easy. They're going to take me totally away because now we started the new movement, Nollywood, and it's really working out fine. It's working out better. Because, you see, we don't understand that time is money in this part of the world. Mm. We don't mm. value time. They're the value time. You understand? And the moment you don't value time, nothing better will come out of it. That's why it's easy for people to owe you, like, five months' rent. Mm -hmm. Because they feel, oh, you're going you're gonna to be okay. But in America, it's not possible. you got to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. What am I going to tell my landlord? So it's like a process. I think if you want a better life for yourself and you have the opportunity, you have to weigh your options. You understand? It's an individual thing. Okay. You want to stay in Nigeria where it's not working out for you? You just want to be there doing it and doing it and doing it around, you okay. know? Okay. So, <laughs> so I think okay. we're, we're getting somewhere with this. Sorry, time. guys, let's quickly go on a break. Okay. Maybe when we come back. Uh, yes, when we come back, we'll be carrying on in this interesting conversation with major Nollywood actor Sean Shion Jimo. All that and more when tea time on Plus TV Africa returns. <laughs> It's the hottest entertainment stories coming up right here, right now. This is Tea Time. Thank you for the tea. Between yourself and Emma, I always the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. It might be maybe second after my meeting. Oh, nice. 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 Fame is fickle. It's a huge distraction. Uh, guys, I'm a good guy now. Come on. <laughs> 
give me your account number, I'll make a transfer. You get the money? Yeah. <laughs> Four million. I started getting scared when the robot boy started saying, you know, we worry people. If you are good, my dear, mm -hmm. you are good. My no. kind of person, and I'm not ready to cry over you any man. You look like Jeru, no? Uh, a lot of people say that. Yeah, just the looks, that's all. Not the account. Just? Just. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back. It's still tea time right here, and we're moving on as we chat to movie producer and actor Sean Sheung Jimmo. Okay, so before the break, if uh, you had a question to ask. Yeah, but before no. oh, you okay. just follow up, he yeah. asked you how this is affecting your career. Oh, yeah. So I want to know how it is affecting the industry. Oh, well, no, it's career and the industry. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah I'm going to do for the, career, so the same way the it affects the country at large. We're having a, we're, we're, we have a brain drain in the country already. All the professionals are running away, including the actors, mm -hmm. because nobody wants to suffer. You know, you don't want to be famous without money. Mm. That's the because at the end of the day, money mm. is the money is the old point. Money is the old idea. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if, if you have an opportunity, especially when you're single, it's easier. You can say, okay, you know what, I'm going to survive. But at the point where you need to provide for people, mm -hmm. then different. you have to make a choice: do I just stay, or do I go? And now, sometimes when you're faced with situations like that, it helps you to think bigger. It helps you want to do more. Now you know, okay, I can't be, be in all the movies. Now I have to make a movie myself. I have to do something myself. I have to make a, you know, live, do something big and proper. You know, so it's like, it's like it has its pros, it has its cons. You know, if, you're, if you just want to be in all the movies and just be gallivanting around, it, it's not for you. So are you, you know? saying being in America and shooting movies in America is more lucrative than being in Nigeria? Well... Apparently. Do you get paid by the hour? Definitely. You, you get paid, you, of course, in America you get paid better than you get paid in Nigeria. Okay, you, so because what's they, the minimum you would take to take up any role? You know, I'll never tell you how much I no, make. I know, no, I'm not telling you, like, <laughs> give us exact figure. Like, I'm saying what's the minimum, like, the least you would take. Hmm. I'm not saying tell us. In Nigeria and America. In America and in Nigeria. No, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to okay. say it. You know what? What about okay, America? Let's talk about America. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Honestly, you know why I can't? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mess a lot of things up for a lot of people. Because I, everybody will run. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I, I don't want to put the industry in that kind of situation. Okay. You understand? You know? All right. I want to talk about well, something no, else. no, sorry. Okay, you I still have a follow-up. Yeah. Okay. We're trying to probe. Now, we're talking about <laughs> why people are running away. You refer to it as a rhetorical question because... Mm. It's not supposed to be a rhetorical question if yeah. you think about it. Mm -hmm. Because people should think about staying in their country, developing their country, developing their industries. Mm -hmm. But everybody's running away and it's like a norm now, which is, shouldn't be acceptable. So I want to know what are the structures that you think should be in place in the entertainment industry at large, not just Nollywood, music, everything, art, <laughs> everything. What do you think should be in place for their to be a proper structure and people stay in their country to develop their own entity. I want to refresh your question for you. What should be in place in the country? Because mm. there's no there's no entertainment without the country, as a, you know, as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think justice is all we need. You know, I, I tell people this all the time. Mm. The only reason why the country is the way it is is because there is no justice. Mm. People don't answer for the things they do. Mm. You understand? So, as long as there's no justice. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna suffer. Okay. Mm. You know, like they're not gonna pay you at work. That you know, things mm. are not gonna work. Okay. Pirates are gonna, you know, mm -hmm. keep pirating movies, and you know, okay. it's just gonna be a mess. All right. Before we wrap up, I really want to ask a question, and it's to do with uh, Colade Johnson because you were very, very expressive about that. You know. Costal sauce. Hey. So please, we haven't got long. So what's your, what do you want to say about that? Do you have any regrets in hindsight for having said anything, or do you feel, do you still stand on your stance? <laughs> you know the answer to that already. How can I have regrets about that? I don't have regrets. I don't say things I don't mean, because I always think deeply before I say anything. Mm. It is wrong what the government is doing by ignoring the plight of the people. Nobody should kill anybody. You understand? We're even heading to a world where they're abolishing the death penalty. 
even mm -hmm. when you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Not to talk of when you don't deserve it. So it's, it's yeah. just, it's, it's an outrage. Okay. Well. All right. So unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to wrap it up because we're absolutely out of time uh, on this episode of the program. But you can join us later this afternoon for yet another interesting episode of the program. Until then, a big thank you to my co-anchors, Ife and Elsie, the all-inclusive production team, and last but not least, our studio guest, Sean Sheung Jimmo. Thank you very much thank for coming. Thank you very much. All right, I'm Tukum Botai with saying thanks for watching and goodbye today is in the African language of Zulu. Hamba kale, sala kale.